Okay, uh, tonight we're doing uh, alchemy, and uh, our quote uh, for today is, the unrelated human being lacks wholeness, for he or she can achieve wholeness only through the soul, and the soul cannot exist without its other side, which is always found in a you. And the implication of this with respect to today's discussion of alchemy is that we will see that the soul for young is not a given. It's not just something you have and uh, don't need to pay any attention to. It is something that has to be constructed. And uh, it is his study in the alchemical text where he found the paradigm for just how this construction of the soul takes place. It is a process, something that unfolds itself through time and with respect to that is very much related to the Aristotelian idea of the entelechy. Uh, Jung really does, by the way, just as a footnote, come out of the Western tradition in a nice way in the sense that the two great philosophers of the Western tradition, Plato and Aristotle, uh, have really sort of reincarnated themselves in his whole worldview. Plato's forms have been reborn as the archetypes of the collective unconscious. And then as we'll see when we move into the synchronicity idea, the archetypes will take on a very larger significance um, as Jung developed the theory of the archetypes, he began to see that they were actually something not necessarily just in the mind, in the soul, but out there in a very mysterious way also. And so that began to lead him into the paradigm of the anima mundi, which of course is what uh, astrology is predicated upon. But that wasn't until his later years. Um, and uh, Aristotle's conception of the soul emerges in his conception of uh, the self because it unfolds its potentialities uh, through the process of living your life. So those two philosophers uh, really do come back in a nice way in uh, Jung's uh, work. Now, uh, with respect to alchemy, uh, I'd like to start just by giving a kind of uh, brief historical sketch about where it originated and uh, what it's all about. The best paradigm, really, uh, the best parallel, rather, uh, that I can make with respect to understanding what alchemy was all about, and it certainly wasn't about making gold. Uh, the alchemists say that ours is not the common gold. The gold that they had in mind was a metaphor for the spirit. They were liberating the spirit from its prison in matter, and the various metals were regarded as various grades of imprisonment of the spirit. And in that sense, it was a very heretical uh, tradition. Um, alchemy originated in the first couple of centuries. Uh, oh, and the paradigm that I wanted to run past you uh, with respect to alchemy is the transubstantiation of the bread and the wine in the Catholic Mass. It's very similar to that undertaking with respect to the fact that the priest calls forth the Logos through the magic of pronouncing the Latin liturgy. And the Logos is the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, which is consubstantial with God and Christ. They are three modalities of one substance. That is the idea of the Trinity. And the Spirit pours forth down into the bread and the wine and undergoes a transubstantiation. That is to say that the visible phenomena remain the same to our senses. The bread and the wine appear to still be bread and wine, but they have undergone a change of their substance. And we are no longer to regard the substance as material now, but as divine. And that is very analogous to what the alchemists were trying to do with the various metals. They were trying to transubstantiate the metals to release the spirit in an epiphany. The difference is, and the reason why the alchemists uh, are very cagey about their language and why they um, clothed it in the metaphors that they did was they didn't want, uh, it was actually to their advantage to have the church believe that they were fraudulent gold makers because the paradigm was essentially heretical. That is to say that in the transubstantiation of the bread and wine in the mass, the spirit is up here and nature has fallen from the spiritual domain and there is an ontological opposition between the world of the spirit above and the world of nature of which we are a part. Nature has fallen in the, the tradition of the church. But in alchemy, the exact opposite is the case. The spirit has poured itself forth in increasing layers of materiality as it has evolved its consciousness. And so it is imprisoned within the world. And the trick is to liberate it from its prison in the world. And um, that will be analogous to the transubstantiation of the bread and the wine and the mass. And uh, so that's um, what the alchemists are up to, just for uh, something to start with there. Now, alchemy itself originated in Alexandria, which is, uh, was in Egypt during the first couple of centuries AD. It came into being at about exactly the same time as Christianity, although possibly earlier, maybe a century or two before 
Uh, we lose track of it. It gets hazy right around the year zero within about 50 years BC and uh, various scholars begin to dispute about dates and it gets hard to track from that point on. And it is very consistent with the spirit of the times during the first few centuries AD when the whole Mediterranean world, <clears throat> Alexander the Great had in his conquests of the ancient world pulled the entire known world, the ecumene, together into a single unified Greek Hellenistic world. And this was a highly urban, highly megalopolitan civilization, very much like our own today, very large and impersonal, uh, enormous swarms of populations, and a very rationalistic uh, mode. But the rationalism was beginning to die out in this period, the materialism, and uh, it was beginning to go over into a new kind of religiosity, and new religious cults were springing up all over the place, and alchemy was one of these. And uh, the alchemists, um, originated in about the same center that the Hermetic tradition as we know it emerged out of. The Corpus Hermeticum and the body of writings that you find in the Hermetic texts have a very similar but yet different, similar insofar as the Corpus Hermeticum has the spirit entrapped in matter but different in that they did not practice any kind of technological uh, tradition that we know of. So this was a different group uh, that came up with the Hermetic texts and the symbolism associated with that than the alchemists, we know that much, but they were related and possibly there were a number of interfaces since both groups were in uh, Alexandria. Now Alexandria was uh, the center of learning of the, the Greek world at this time. The great library, the museum, was the place to be if you were an intellectual of any repute whatsoever. And um, originally the place had started as a mere fishing village and when the Greeks arrived they sort of set up shop and turned it almost overnight into a gigantic megalopolis and it was famous for its enormous uh, lighthouse uh, tower that you could see for miles uh, coming into the uh, harbor there. So alchemy came out of this uh, Hellenistic matrix and it began to leak into the Far East. It was carried into India and into China during those first couple of centuries uh, AD. And the Christians, or some of the early Christian groups, also picked it up and were interested in it. Now, the matrix of alchemy itself was born out of the fusion of Greek philosophy with Egyptian technology. The Egyptians had a technological tradition going way, way, way back. Of course, we all know about their refined processes of mummification. And they were also experts in glass making and bead making and uh, jewel crafting and metallurgy. And that technological matrix was uh, the matrix out of which alchemy came and the philosophical paradigm came from the Greeks. So that marriage of those two is responsible for the tradition as we know it. Now there is some evidence too that there may be a continuity of alchemy uh, going clear back to the mythology of the blacksmith. And uh, we can trace metallurgy back, clear back into the Neolithic to about 5000 BC uh, to, with the art of copper smelting. And there was a whole mythology associated with this, uh, uh, the refining of metals, with the extraction of the metal from the ores. The problem with that is that the metals are mixed with impurities in their ores and they have to be put through a process of heating and melting in order to extract the metal from the ore. And there was a whole mythology associated with that whereby it was thought that the metals were like embryos and they were in the womb of Mother Earth. And if left to themselves over time, they would gradually grow and ripen and mature and become gold. The only problem is it would take too long. And so the blacksmith on the one hand and the alchemist were removing these metals from their earthly context and putting them, in one case in the art of the blacksmith, putting them through the forge and the alchemist through the crucible. And they were collapsing the time factor that was involved to hasten the process of maturation of the metals. So there is probably a pre-existent uh, metallurgical matrix going clear back into the days of uh, uh, metallurgy as far back as we can trace it, particularly with respect to this womb symbolism and the embryo motif. The metals are always analogized uh, as embryos amongst the alchemists. So that is the early uh, matrix for alchemy. Now alchemy was carried on by a number of Christian groups and though the Greeks in Alexandria were the first to bring it into being, it was really the Arabs who brought it into perfection. 
and scholars speculate that the Arabs probably got a hold of it as a result of an interface with the Christian groups. There were a number of heretical Christian groups that took Christianity about five centuries to centralize